But I learned about Mike and Cups on, only in the year 2000 when Mike was releasing the 1.0. In, and in the late 90s, from 1997 to 2000, I did my PhD thesis in physics, in theoretical physics. Wow. And the theoretical physics department had several uh, had several workstations they did not work with windows windows was only in the secretary room mm -hmm. in all the other in, in 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 the department for doing physics we had unix workstations sgi irix ah yep 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 and yes yes i don't know whether you are old enough for that oh no i'm i'm um, i'm, I'm 27 <laughs> but i i'm aware of unix history <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and and uh, then is yes, yes. I'm 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 born 1970. I'm 55, and and then there is and then there was digital Unix, <laughs> but these workstations were expensive. There were some in the department and some of the offices, but not every office had a, a workstation. Some had a terminal, an X terminal, so the one could use graphical applications running on the workstations and displaying on mm -hmm. the X terminal. Mm -hmm. The terminal itself was running X, X window and the windows from the, from the workstations were forwarded to there. Mm -hmm. This also can can be done nowadays with x.org, but nearly nobody does it anymore nowadays. And uh, I don't know whether it's also possible with Way Wayland. I think not. Um, and X11 style forwarding, no. You you can do it with X Wayland because X Wayland is a full X11 server. Um, but nowadays, you would, if you want to do something like that, you would generally rely on VNC or RDP for like a full, um, a full desktop uh, internet thing. Yes, yes. And so we had these terminals, and we had even some workplaces or a room with two per some workplaces without screen or, or a room with two persons in it, but only one screen. And so we did not have a screen workplace for everyone individually. And so in 1997, when I started to be system administrator, my first task was to put up PCs in, in, in the rooms and to install Linux on them. Mm -hmm. as then you have once you have computers where you can do things locally, mm -hmm. but you have also X so that you can uh, use graphical applications running on the workstations. Mm -hmm. So, and the, the operating system was SUSE 5.1, and we had it at a packet as a package of CDs, mm -hmm. which you can buy in stores. You can find a package so of the, CD. Oh, yes. yes, yes. So you get something like four or five CDs and, and, and a manual. And so these, so then I have installed Linux on these PCs. It was not as easy as it was nowadays, as there were many pieces of hardware which did not work with Linux. So it meant also that we had to buy some hardware, some graphics cards or so, and to change them in the PCs to make this work. Mm -hmm. And so this way I introduced Linux to the network. So we had then a Linux, SGI, and digital Unix, SGI, IRIX. Mm -hmm. and, and so I put Linux into the landscape. And the printing, we were still in the dark years of LPD. And you know, LPD is the line printer daemon. And you know, it's what a line printer is. A line printer is a printer which has fixed letters to print only text. Mm, okay. Like a typewriter, only may, only with uh, several several ro rolls of, of letters to print a line to print a line at once, and so being faster. <laughs> and but they could only print a grid of text, like a typewriter. And 
for this, the line printer daemon was uh, was designed, and so there was nothing with paper trays and duplex and resolution and high and low quality and so. The line printer daemon only has taken care to to carry the text over to the printer, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, there were also some postcard printers, and then one started. Then uh, the free software developers started with small thingies like magic filter or so to control that Go script is put into the line. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, or for the non postcard printer goes yes. For the postcard printers, even not Go script. Mm -hmm. And for the no, yeah, yes. For the poster printers, one had in the client to take care to send postcript, and as these these were the first, this was the first standard protocol for printers, and therefore graphical applications in that time have, have sent postscript to the mm -hmm. to to the printing system, and these and then the magic filter and so which I uh, I mentioned this was that it puts GoScript in the line to turn PostScript into other protocols like PCL or so, or, or also for integrating the little drivers I talked in the beginning. Before we go uh, too about. far on from that, um, can you just explain what PostScript is? Ah, yes, yes. PostScript is a so-called page description language. It's a language, uh, so a proto um, or protocol, which is created to describe what you can see on a page, mm -hmm. on a printable page, like, like in a book or like in a, a, a catalog, an advertising folder, uh, also like in a magazine and so on. So mm -hmm. also with color and pictures and so on, not only text. Mm -hmm. And with free placement of all the elements with uh, free choice of fonts and si font sizes, font directions, and so on, so that you can do everything which you usually see in magazines and, and, and catalogs and, right. and flyers and so on. <laughs> and PostScript was created by Adobe, and they have made it like a, 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 as a Turing complete programming language. Mm -hmm. This means that it was not only a row of, of fixed uh, instructions, put this letter there, put this letter there, but it was really a, a, a programming language. So if you wanted to put 10 letters there, you could write a loop and variables so that the 10 letters are not put on the on top of each other and so on and and this could be really abused for example that uh that people write write a chess program and then they place chess against their printer <laughs> or they they write a program which only 800 800 bytes and on the, and the printer needs five minutes of thinking be be before it starts printing, but then you ne get get nice ray tracing graphics on your paper. <laughs> but on the other what side, what you're saying is you could play Doom on a printer like this. <laughs> yes, yes. But to play Doom, I recommend to try it only on a printer which does at least twenty four pages per second, so that you have fluent graphics. <laughs> and it's not environmental friendly. No, definitely not. <laughs> and, it's definitely not cheap either. <laughs> yes, yes. They, they'd better try to install Doom on a dishwasher and not on a printer. And, and then, they, but, but the, then one could theoretically or, or, or so even program malware. Mm -hmm. I, right. I do not know about any exploit which, which happens, but it is an attack vector. Mm -hmm. And yes, yes, that's PostScript, and it was the standard. When I was system administrator, this was the standard. Mm -hmm. So all the applications have sent PostScript, and the printing system, LPD in that time, had to run some filters. Usually one used a magic filters or so for that, which call GoScript if you want to, uh, to to turn PostScript in what the printer wanted if the printer was not a PostScript printer. Mm -hmm. And 
This was the printing system in that time. It was complicated. It was not easy. You needed a system administrator to set up a printer. Right. There, there was also a printing section in YAS, the, the setup program of, of uh, Isuse, but only on a few printers you could really uh, set it up easily on others. It, you start you have to do you really do system administration on the command line especially SUSE did not ship all these little drivers right right and yes yes at least in that time yes this was our system administrator and this and as i had to do with linux i've compiled linux applications i've even compiled kde 1.0 on irix <laughs> So I, I had K, I had made KDE one it was a little bit slow on on the SGI but it was <laughs> working <laughs> yes and so I learned about free software and and one and, and so we got also a, C, a CD uh, a CD writer mm -hmm. and. Only one, not for everyone, a CD writer. They were not in inside the PCs. <laughs> it was standing in our, there was one uh, room with some workstations and printers inside. <laughs> and in this room was also standing the CD writer. And now I, as a system administrator, wanted that everyone can use it. <laughs> and, and there was no program where you can, in a multi-user in environment with a nice graphical user interface, burn CDs. And I found XCD host. And, and this was a nice, a, a nice uh, graphical user interface. It was written in TCL ticks, something which to nowadays TCLTX or so. Okay. I'm not very sure how it was exactly spelled mm. because I, 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 it seems you're looking for it now. Yeah. And TCLTK? Yes, yes, yes TCLTK. <laughs> and yes, and it was a programming language for writing, scripting language for writing uh, uh, graphical user interfaces. <laughs> But it was only working for single user. It was not working for you, uh, a network with multiple users where people are SSHing in and then with the help of X uh, displaying the, the window of, of this program on their, on their uh, local workstation. <laughs> and so I have modified TCL, I have modified XCDO host. So, so that it was working in multi-user environments. And I have uh, sent the patch to the original author of it. And this was my first contribution to free software. Awesome. This way, yes, yes. This way I got into it. Mm -hmm. And I later on even uh, translated XCDOs to Portuguese. This was this was also uh, one of my early uh, contributions to free software. Mm -hmm. So, and then during the time, uh, the professors uh, saw all, uh, we had some printers. We had black and white laser printers, and they were postscript. They had two trays and they had duplex, mm -hmm. and. In, in the basic thing which you wanted to control on, and if there were many things one could control on them, the basic thing you wanted to control on it so that the users can easily use them is to select the tray, the upper or lower, and to, to set the duplex. Duplex is either no duplex, duplex long edge binding, and duplex short edge binding. Mm -hmm. And so, we had only LPD, and LPD does not support printer options, as it was made for line printers. You can send a job, but you cannot accompany the job with options. There were some very obscure options, mm -hmm. which were which made only sense on actual line printers, but we did not do, do not have that line printers. So my predecessors of system administrators did some very very 
strange scripting <laughs> because there were six, exactly six LP, the, 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 the program with the command line tool with which you send a print job, LPR, had exactly six options, six Boolean options, which also did not make sense for for, for our laser pointers. And then the system administrators have simply written a script which has interpreted these as the six combinations of, of uh, the two trace and the three duplex modes. <laughs> okay. And so, so, so option one was then upper tray no duplex. Option two was upper tray uh, uh, duplex long edge and so forth. Right, right. But this at least <laughs> conveys from the client to the server which tray and which duplex option you wanted. But it was very cryptic for the user. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they wrote also user scripts for the clients where the user could give uh, some uh, some options like tray one, tray two, and duplex on, off, and long edge, short edge, and the, this these shell script just converted these the the these options into one of the six LPR options, and then they send it off to the to the server. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 and in the middle of two th and and then the professors came and bought a, a new printer, a color laser printer for 14,000 German marks, which was in the beginning when a German mark was converted to a euro, it was 7,000 euros. Mm -hmm. And I think when one puts inflation and so, so long time ago, perhaps it, it would be now 15,000 euros, the, the mm -hmm. effort which they had to make. But, when you buy a laser printer of that type today, is everything uh, everything electronic that got much cheaper would, would probably be be less uh, something like five hundred or right. so. So, yes, or two hundred. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and so they bought bought a color laser printer. Mm -hmm. I did not as as in that time of the system administration, I was not taking care of printing, these other other uh, colleagues of mine did. This printer was a postcard printer, I didn't know that. And it came with graphical user interfaces, print dialogues for the commercial Unixes, but not for Linux. Mm -hmm. And so the system administrator set it simply up. The, you have to SSH into uh, one of the commercial Unixes and print from there. The <laughs> home directories were mounted into all, all the machines of the network from, from the from a file server. So mm -hmm. if you SSH into a, a workstation, you saw your same home directory as, as you saw locally. 